Tonight I'm going to begin in a way I have never done this in my 46 years as a priest, but um, I just couldn't get it out of my head, so I knew I had to do it. And I'll give credit where it's due right away. Uh, if you do not know the Christmas album uh, of Roberta Flack, I really recommend you check it out. Uh, I find it to be one of the most inspirational Christmas albums that I know. And there's some original songs on it. And one is Because This Child Was Born. So we're going to sing it together, OK? And uh, I'm going to teach you a refrain that comes up constantly. It goes, because this child was born, because this child was born. One more time. Hark now, hear the angels sing, because this child was born. All mankind has been redeemed, because this child was born. He laid aside his golden crown, then from heaven he came down. Now the lost can all be found because this child was born. Wise men came from near and far on that first Christian morn. Guided by a twinkling star to where this child was born. Meek and lowly was his way, from his manger filled with hay. Peace and joy are ours today, because this child was born. We can have eternal life, because Free from pain and free from strife. He broke the bonds of death and sin. Ours the victory to win. We then advocate within. All creations join in song because this child was born. Grateful praise to God belongs because this child was born. King of kings and Lord of lords, there to reign forevermore. Grace forgave and love was born because this child was born. Well, give yourselves a hand. Actually, I got through it without crying. I always cried when I listened to Roberta do it because it's just extraordinary. And what I like about it is that it, it just almost forces us to ask, what does this mean? What does this mean? What has happened to us because this child was born? And not just that, I, 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 if we listen to these scriptures tonight, the first reading from Isaiah, it's uh, God talking to Israel saying, you'll be my wife, betrothed to me, my delight, my love. And God speaks so intimately to Israel that wants Israel to experience all of the goodness that would come because of the Messiah, the Christ. And in the most intimate language, it really prepares us for this moment. Paul, of course, lived after Jesus was born and lived and died and rose. But he speaks also of the great importance, the change that has come over us because of this one and this one. And these are intimately united too. And then that impossibly long gospel passage. I, I think it's the longest one of the year. And um, oftentimes I would skip all that genealogy and just jump to the birth of Jesus. But again, I, I thought this year, no, no, I'm going to read it all because 
although it may not strike us as very important or mean very much to us, the genealogy is very important. I know, uh, I've said this before, but when I go back to Kansas with my dad and my mom, my dad would give me a genealogy. I, it wasn't a perfect one or anything, but uh, he had 13, there were 13 brothers and sisters, uh, both in my mom and dad's family. So you can imagine the number of relatives, the number of cousins. And he had it all straight. Well, this is your aunt, and your, this is your uncle here. And, this, and he's telling me all about him. And then, when he was in the mood, I'd get a few little saucy stories, too, because every one of us, every one of us who has big families, or not even big families, just a few other people, there's always a story wrapped around every one, huh? The cheese may is there. If you just pick a little bit, you can find out who did this and who did that. And, and uh, even when I was a kid, uh, it was almost unheard of of divorce in those days. I mean, today it's one out of two or something like that. It's pretty high. But in those days, uh, you know, and I went to Catholic school and, oh, all of this brouhaha around divorce. But I had one uh, aunt who was divorced and her brother also was divorced. My aunt was divorced before I was born. Um, and, and again, it just was scandalous for me. And then my uncle, my dad's youngest brother, got divorced while I was a teenager. And, and again, it was stunning. And one of the things that I loved about it, not love the divorce, but um, when we would go back there, my dad and mom visited everybody. They'd often leave us at, with one of my cousins, and, and then they'd go to see everybody because they knew we would be bored to tears. And they always went, and my dad would say it, they always went to see my, his brother's wife, even though they were divorced. He says, I always liked her. I still do. I don't care what my brother did, but I'm going to go visit her. And that, to me, was, was very Christ-like. That was, that was what I think Jesus would have done. But every family, every family has a genealogy. But this one is unique. And uh, about two weeks ago, we get it in the middle of Advent, so I wrote up, I first and went and researched it because I never remember some of this stuff. But it's, a, it's not an exact genealogy. It's arranged in groups of 14. Um, and the reason is that in the Hebrew consonants to the name David, the Hebrew consonants, it's D-A-D. And D has the value of, there, there's numerology wrapped around the letters in the Bible, so D had the value of four twice, and then A had the value of six. So that was 14 three times, okay? And because uh, there were four, three sets of 14 generations. Spelling out in Hebrew, David. Saying stronger, stronger, and yet strongest of all, David, the line of David from which Jesus the Christ would be born. So today, I wanted to give a little flavor of that in that genealogy. You can look it up in your browser. You can find out anything these days and, and ask what are the, the three sets of generations of 14 generations uh, regarding the birth of Jesus, and you'll get a, a, a mouthful. You really will. All of that leading us up to that. Um, this is the only parish I've been in where at every Mass on Christmas, we've always had a child carrying the baby Jesus. And so that tradition was here long before I got here, and I like it very much. I think the children love it very much. And um, there is a real connection that they make to this little ceramic or plaster or whatever uh, baby Jesus here. And I think, you know, because as a religious people, we wrap around a lot of religion and a lot of sentiment around almost everything that we do a lot of religion and a lot of sentiment. And sometimes it's a little hard to carve through that and get to the reality. But what's the reality here? This is, this is a shocking reality. I mean, any one of you, any, any woman who's given birth, can you imagine entering into a stable? That's all, the best you could find. A smelly stable with animals around? Hmm. The poverty of the situation is, is shocking. And yet the love of the situation is equally shocking. It's amazing. And the love that I think we bring to this scene, the number of people that have little manger scenes in their house and 
We come to have a bless because this, this scene just says so much to us. And what I find remarkable about it, which why I thought singing that song, because this child was born, to hammer into us what a difference this child has made. This child, this birth, is there anybody else that two-thirds of the world remembers their birthday every year? I doubt it. I think we are about eight billion in the, in the world now, and probably two and a half billion are Christians. And not only do they remember the birth of Jesus, I dare say that not a day goes by where they don't think of Jesus. Every single day, there is not one name in the universe that has more significance than this name on a daily, regular, routine, day-in and day-out basis. And this child, because this child was born, we believe all of those scriptures that were proclaimed tonight were fulfilled in him. And we believe, because this child was born, that everything that he had within him as a human divine person finally came up to that cross and was revealed in a most provocative way by the things that he said while he hung on that cross. And for me, the most striking, the most meaningful, the most power-filled are when he said, in the face of all those who were hating him and killing him and mocking him and ridiculing him, in the face of all his, his assassins, he could say, Father, forgive them all. They know not what they do. Because that child was born, and because of who that child was, that revealed him there and made all that possible too. We come to this feast of Christmas, and I ask this question. If Jesus were just born there, would that be enough? And I say no. No. It is equally important equally important that we can say he's born here. Because if he's born there in that crib, as startling or beautiful or romantic or whatever it is, it doesn't mean a whole bunch unless he's also born here. And when Jesus the Christ gets born here, and it doesn't happen once, it doesn't happen on Christmas Day, I guess we repeat it and celebrate it, but it's something that happens every single time that we say something he said or do something that he did or act like him or follow him as a, a model of faith. Every time we love when hate would have been just as easy, maybe even easier, Jesus Christ is born again in our heart. Every time that we find ourselves with generosity rather than stinginess, Jesus Christ is born again in our heart. Every time that we forgive or ask for forgiveness, rather than to let division and separation and hatred linger in the air, we have Jesus Christ born again in our lives, in our hearts, in our spirit. So today, because this child was born, I think that we are a very different people. And the more that we know that and realize that because this child was born, that we are a people that have been irrevocably changed by the power of his love. That's what the meaning of this Christmas is all about. So, go home and have your tamales tonight. Okay. Go home and stay up until one. Boys and girls, when you open those gifts, throw that paper everywhere. Have a ball, okay? I should have said this before because it may be a little too late, but my advice to parents is, or, or to anyone who's getting gifts for little kids, make sure that there's two things about them. One is that they make lots of noise and they require lots of batteries. <laughs> All of that, and I know every family, especially with kids, this is just a, this is just a, a great night. Tomorrow's a great day. But I hope, I hope in your households, not just in this one, the church here, but in your households, and what I like to call little domestic churches, every one of them is a church, that you will ask the question and answer the question why this is so important 
because this child was born. And parents, you most of all need to give that meaning to your children. I know that we say this, it's almost a, um, it just we say it automatically, Jesus is the reason for the season, but he really is. Jesus really is the reason for this season. And I hope that in spite of all the glitter and the lights and the money spent and the energy and the effort and everything to make the meal and this night and tomorrow special, that we just don't forget why this is important. And it's because this child was born. Oh, I want to say a word in Spanish because we usually have this Mass as bilingual, but um, because it was the Sunday services, we just went the weekend English, and two English in the morning, two Spanish. But I want to say just a couple words in Spanish in case there are some who don't really understand much English. And I hope you understand my Spanish. Yo quiero decir básicamente que estamos repitiendo en canción y en mi palabra es, ¿por qué este niño estaba nacido o fue nacido? Uh, ¿Por qué él fue nacido? Esta es la razón por esta noche, por toda nuestra uh, alegría, por todas las festividades, por todo lo que vamos a hacer esta noche y mañana. Y yo creo que la cosa más importante, yo creo, es investigar y pensar y compartir el significado del nacimiento de Jesús. Dios penetrando el mundo, la divinidad, divinidad de Dios penetrando nuestra humanidad y nacido en este niño, este Cristo, uh, recibimos Cristo, recibimos la gracia del Señor, recibimos el poder del cielo en esta persona uh, que mostró más que nunca cuando Él llegó a la cruz el poder de su amor. Espero que todos nosotros podemos abrir para recibir este amor en, en nuestros corazones.